Not tough but one, Mark Lobliner, tigerfitness.com. Genetics. Do they really determine how big you can get? Or is it just an excuse? That's a great question I get all the time. A lot of people use genetics as an excuse to not train hard because they won't get to that goal. And they're partially correct. I know this for a fact. Will I ever be as good as Jay Cutler? Genetically, no. Give me all the drugs in the world, not gonna happen. Similarly, give me all the steroids in the world, I'm not gonna hit a baseball as far as Barry Bonds. Genetics are a large predeterminant for everything you do in life. In fact, bodybuilding, I would argue even more so than any other sport or any other competitive activity, being that it's not only your stature, your limb length, your waist circumference, all those things, your bone structure, you can't change that with exercise, you can't change that with diet, you can't change that with drugs. And let's talk about drugs. Some people respond to drugs better. In fact, I know this for a fact, I know this for a fact. The best bodybuilders are normally the ones on less drugs than most NPC guys. Do you wanna know why? Because their body simply responds better to drugs. Their receptor, their androgen receptor sensitivity, all those things play a huge role. So yes, genetics are a big part. However, that doesn't mean you can't get better. See, there's this thing we always talk about you always got to compete against yourself first, right? Now, if I got on stage my first time and I saw that, okay, my limb length, my arms are obscenely long for my height. My brother's 6'1", my arms are the same length as his at five foot seven. Right there, I got long insertions on my biceps. I don't have the greatest peak. And, uh, but I'll tell you this, after 30 plus years of training, they've gotten better every single year. To the point where, even though if I looked at the first bodybuilding show I ever did, I would have been like, I might as well quit. I don't have the genetics to do it. But competing and, and, and I'm sorry, getting better every year, not giving up, honing in on the craft, becoming the best Mark Lobliner ever. The best Mark Lobliner ever is not the best in the world. In fact, not even close. The best Mark Lobliner ever was just good enough to get a pro card. And hopefully this year I'm able to compete in a pro show if my schedule allows. That's better than I would have ever imagined. That's when people ask, like, people say shit like, oh, you're not a good pro. I'm like, yeah, but I'm a pro. For, my, for me, for what I look at, my genetics, that's friggin' astounding. I don't care if I won my pro card at a local, um, I don't know, a local, like, uh, petting zoo. I got an IFBB pro card. That's fucking awesome. I never expected to do that. But the reason I did is because I didn't look at my pictures and say there's no way I can genetically compete with Jay Cutler, with Phil Heath, with, with at the time, Sean Roden, God rest his soul, with Derek Lunsford, with, with, with Hottie. All these guys, I can't compete with them. Not at their level, but I can compete with people using my strengths. That's where you look at your strengths. What am I genetically capable of? My son is a wrestler. He's my height, one inch shorter, but he's wrestling at 115. How? Well, what can we do? What can the low blinders do? We get lean. One thing we can do, my son Thomas and I, we get lean. That's what we do. So I can actually go on stage and make up for my deficiencies, my arms, my, my overall just look, maybe my waist isn't as small as a key on, but I can be so conditioned that even though I lose on symmetry and muscle size and basically everything, I can at least win conditioning. So if I'm in a show where someone doesn't have the best shape, but they have better shape than me, they might not have the best size, but they have better size than me, I can outcondition them so much, and maybe my shape is comparable that I can win. And that's how I got a pro card. I simply, on that day, the lineup favored me. And that's how bodybuilding is. But here's the thing, when you're walking around, right? And you're walking, you're walking around the mall and you have, let's say you have a shitty build. Let's say you got me, like me, you have long limbs. So your biceps don't have a huge peak. Let's say you don't have the best leg to genetics. Your calves are a little bit small. If you've gained muscle and you stayed lean, 
Let's talk about pre-workouts. See, a lot of them just get you spiked and then you crash. The crash is crazy. When I take a pre-workout, I don't want my heart beating out of my chest. I can't do a set to failure with that. No, I want something that gets me focused. I want my mind to just go, I'm gonna get all the weight. I want my body to feel like I can go crush it, make the gains of my life. That's why the pre-workout I use is Ambrosia Kinetic. Ambrosia Kinetic is the greatest mushroom-enhanced mind and body performance booster pre-workout ever created. Go to tigerfitness.com now. That's tigerfitness.com. Coupon code MAHA, M-A-H-A, MAHA. M-A-H-A, make America healthy again. And you get 10% off, not just Kinetic, but the entire site. Go to tigerfitness.com now, save and make the gains you've been wanting. You're gonna stand out. I don't care if you have the worst genetics on earth. If you train for multiple years and you diet correct to your goals, and let's say you stay natural, you're still gonna look phenomenal compared to the average person. And most people watching this channel will never compete, have no interest in competing. You're still going to be awesome. But here's the thing. Forget about all that. What does this lifestyle do for you? For me, it gives me goal setting. It allows me to accomplish things. And for me, it's the way I start my day. I get up. I, I take my vitamins. I have my 32 ounces of water. I take my nectar, my immortal, all that good stuff. I chug it down, take a dump, hop into the cold plunge for three minutes, get dressed, go to the gym, crush it. I'm ready to kill the day. I'm in the office, I'm in meetings, and all day I got it done, and I've done the hard stuff first. Office work is easy compared to getting really cold for three minutes. It, it's already like 30 degrees outside. I'm hopping even a, a colder water, and then, then I'm sitting, and I'm at a gym lifting things that are really challenging and heavy, so by the time the day rolls around, I'm like, well, this is nothing. So it's really easy for me to get on with my day and be successful as an entrepreneur and a CEO. By the way, tigerfitness.com, coupon code MAHA saves you 10% at tigerfitness.com. That's what I do. So beyond being Mr. Olympia, even if you don't have the genetics, I don't have the genetics, I'll tell you that straight up. But by setting those goals, you're getting your mind ready for what it needs to be the best you ever that day, to accomplish things and do epic stuff in your life, to be a better father, a better husband. The bottom line is don't ever like let bodybuilding take over your life. Make it something that enhances your life. And go to the gym, have fun, man. I have fun at the gym. I go there, I talk to Bob, who's a coach at Nolansville for wrestling. We, we start out the day, we talk about wrestling, what meets we have that week. We coach Nolansville Wrestling, Legacy does, so very lo love their team a lot. And we talk about how Thomas is doing, he wrestles for a different school. We have a good time. I talk to my bros over there. I get my lift in. Sometimes I lift my daughter when she's in town from college. That's what I'm doing this week. Sometimes I lift with my wife. Sometimes I just go in there. I'll put Joe Rogan or Huberman on the AirPods, listen to a podcast, get a hard workout in, enhance my mind, enhance my body at the same time. It's amazing. So look at bodybuilding for what it can do for you. It's not necessarily what you can do for bodybuilding, meaning you don't have to win a show. What can bodybuilding do for you? Don't compete. Unless you're in the 1% of assholes who think that you can juggle life and competing, you don't need to compete. Just adhere to the lifestyles, the principles. Eat good meals, structure your food. But again, if you have an opportunity to go out to a really good burger place, get the fucking hamburger, get the fries. Fuck, get some melted cheese on it. Have a good time. You know, if you have to take a day off of lifting because you have an important meeting at work, take the day off. But setting those daily things, having structure in your life is the best thing that bodybuilding ever did for me. And, and even though I've earned my money off the stage, not even in fitness, but more on the business side, dude, if it wasn't for bodybuilding, I wouldn't be in this beautiful house right now. So I got to say bodybuilding allowed me mentally to succeed in life. Physically, that's just, that's just an added bonus. But what bodybuilding did for me as a human being to set forth goals, to set goals and to go accomplish them, that's where bodybuilding is truly a gift. And I am blessed to be a part of this, uh, this, this, this industry. Um, or not even an industry, this lifestyle. Bodybuilding industry is bullshit. The lifestyle is where it's at. Anyway, guys, what do you think? Comment down below. Let me know. 
um, what your thoughts are on this. Do genetics, does it matter? Like if you have shit genetics, what are you gonna do? Like give up? I'm not as smart as Elon Musk. I'm not gonna give up. No, just because you can't be a billionaire doesn't mean you can't be a millionaire. Like if you keep striving to do epic shit, you're gonna keep doing epic shit. Just don't ever make excuses that you're not good enough to get there. All right, guys. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Um, be sure to like this video, subscribe to this channel, click on the notification bell, and remember, that's not a game.